This is an address, an address to all the dignitaries and all the eminent physicians and to the Bengal Chamber of Commerce for opening up a new vista. I'm filled with gratitude because I belong to the section of society whose needs are being addressed today. And I was filled with fear and trepidation as I entered my 60s. But thanks to these gentlemen, thanks to the efforts of those have, who have taken the special, uh, I mean their time and energy and devoted their care to the elderly for opening up a whole new vista in front of us, for filling us with hope and for giving us the opportunity to play a second innings. What a new concept, a new beginning for those of us who have entered this stage of life. Thank you. We now welcome Dr. Indrani Chakraborty. This is a very interesting subject. The elderly care today is being taken care of by one and many. Now, are they trained and authorized to do so and what should be the training protocol is a question is being addressed by the government of India and the government of India's director for the Eastern India is Dr. Indrani Chakraborty running Calcutta Metropolitan Institute of Gerontology training young girls and boys to care for the elderly. Let us see what she has to say. Welcome, Dr. Indrani Chakraborty. <clears throat> My respectful namaskar to everybody, all fathers and mothers of Bengal, they are being present here. Now the presentation, the title of my presentation is Training and Capacity Building, a unique agenda, the pioneering initiatives taken up by the government in the field of training and capacity building. <clears throat> but why training is necessary? In a country like ours, it is necessary to generate trained geriatric caregivers stated as geriatric animators. Now, in a country like ours, where parents are regarded as God, Pitri Deva Bhava, Matri Deva Bhava, then why formal caregiver is required? This can be explained scientifically. The first point is population aging. What is that? Population aging occurs when large number of people survive into old age and relatively fewer children are born. You can see the global population pyramid in 2002 and 2025. And this blue population pyramid will be replaced by a more cylinder-like structure in the year 2025. India has 104 million elderly at present and the projection shows that the number will reach 177 million in the, in the year 2025. Now, this is the demographic transition theory. The different stages of demographic transition and these different stages are all the time linked with the economic development of the country. The first stage, that is agricultural society. Both fertility and mortality were high. 
people die young and large number of children were born. <clears throat> then the second stage, that is the onset of industrialization. In this stage, mortality drops down because of the advancement of medical science, breakthroughs in surgery, improved sanitation and nutrition, mortality drops down, but fertility remains same because there was no birth control method at that time. The lag between this fertility rate and the mortality rate gives rise to large absolute number. The third stage is the modernization and economic development. We call it information age. In this stage, both fertility and mortality decline and the population becomes stable. Now, this is the graphical representation of demographic transition theory propounded by Warren Thompson in the year 1929, agricultural society, industrial society, and information age. This pie chart shows that Asian countries accommodates more than 50% of the total elderly population. Uh, now, 2002, it is 53%. It will increase to 59% in the year 2025. The life expectancy is on rise. Monaco has the highest life expectancy, 89.9 years. Chada, an African country, is the lowest, 39.8. India stands in between, 69.8 years. The another point is females have higher life expectancy compared to their male counterpart. But we sociologists believe that only number cannot make a problem social problem. A problem becomes social problem when large number of people cannot solve it at individual or micro level and requires social help. There are two major social pact factors that have made the aged a vulnerable section of the society. The first is the breakdown of the joint family. <clears throat> Based on the dictum, from each according to his ability, to each according to his need, joint family system is considered to be the best social security for all the But it breaks down for various reasons. Reasons are many. I have no time to discuss all these reasons. But it ceases to perform its function of providing care to all the members of the household from cradle to grave. This is the first important point, and the second point is empowerment of women. Throughout the world, in any country, at any given point of time, women are considered as the primary caregiver. But under the impact of Western education, globalization, modernization, more and more women are now joining the workforce and it, they find it difficult, very, very difficult to look after both the parents and the in-laws. They are called in sociology as sandwich generation. Now there is an epidemiolo epidemiological shift in the nature of diseases from communicable to non-communicable. At present, the recent WHO report reveals that 70% of the seniors worldwide suffer from all these non-communicable diseases. And they need caregiver, 24 hours caregiver. So the number of caregiver is diminishing in the informal sector. And the number of care receiver is just uh, increasing all over the countries. And the gap between this caregiver and the care receiver entity made them a vulnerable section of the society. No welfare state can deny its responsibility towards elderly. Ours is the largest democracy of the world. And the constitution makers of India, they have envisaged the problem and incorporated certain provisions in the constitution. There are many provisions, but the two are very important. That is, list three of Schedule 7 of the Indian Constitution says that social security is the concurrent responsibility of the central and the state government, and especially Article 41, which is the directive principles of the state policy. It has directed that the state shall make effective provisions for securing the rights to public assistance in case of old age. 
our government actually realized the seriousness of the problem after 1982. Why 82? 1982 is considered as a landmark in the history of gerontology. In this year, the first international conference on aging was held, where all the member countries participated. These representatives of our member countries, they formulated and adopted an international plan of action on aging. 18 principles were identified, and later it was grouped together into five basic principles. Allow me to say these five principles, independence, care, dignity, self-fulfillment, participation. These five principles are regarded as the basic human rights for the elderly for whom we have been working for more than three decades. In 1999, the year, year marked by the United Nations as the International Year for Older Person, IYOP. In this year, our government formulated a national policy on older person, NPOP. NPOP declares that seniors are asset to the society. They are not a liability. They are not just consumers of goods. They can be their producers and they must have a legitimate place in the society. National policy is a book, and uh, I have touched upon only the major interventions, the points of major interventions. These are finance, health, shelter, welfare, protection against abuse, because it is really, really, we should ashamed that every third senior citizen is a victim of abuse at present, and the perpetrators of abuse are near and dear ones, where trust is the basic of relationship. And the last point is the concept of productive aging, how to utilize the potentials of the seniors for the benefit of the society. <clears throat> the first stage of implementation of the national policy is the Project NICE, National Initiatives on Care for elderly. This project came into vogue in the year 2000, and the objective is to develop a cadre of group of geriatric animators. We call it geriatric caregivers. Actually, the government called them geriatric animators. And to generate a skilled manpower focused on intervention in family and community settings. <clears throat> the government introduced two types of courses. The first is the long-term courses. It is open for the public. Any person within the age group 18 to 30 with the highest seniority background can apply for this training course, which is six months training course, and the another is bedside attendant course. And there are many, many short-term courses. Many short-term courses. These are for the functionaries of age care institutions who are actually doing the age care job, the hands-on age care job. They are representing various age care institutions. The organization which I am representing is the Calcutta Metropolitan Institute of Gerontology. We have been working for the elderly over three decades with a focus community development. Community development is a holistic approach based on Mahatma Gandhi's theory of Sharbodayo, that is upliftment of all. Mahatma Gandhi coined the term Sharbodayo in the year 1903 while translating Antodayo, that is upliftment of the poor. A brief background of our organization, it is the Regional Resource and Training Center, RRTC, on aging of the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment in Eastern Zone declared as center of excellence by the government for disseminating knowledge. We have received the national award in 2006. CMIG runs two postgraduate courses, the only institute in the country. Uh, the one is uh, Calcutta University course, another is Starling University course. And we host all the training courses we have shown so far. And uh, we have produced trained geriatric animators and houses 750 beneficiaries which is 1% of the 
total aged slum dwellers. These are the allotted state, Bihar, West Bengal, Jharkhand, and Orisha. In these states, we have been working. And these are our activities, the activities, duties, and responsibilities bestowed on us by the government. And we are answerable for, to the government for doing all these things in these four states. Now, these are the training programs we organize in our organization throughout the year. It may be one day, it may be six months, it may be three months. These are all, all government-aided programs. And the students need not pay a single poisha for these training programs. On the contrary, they get some, I mean, snacks, tea, etc., in this training course. Now, let me say a few words about the curriculum of gerontology. Gerontology is a young discipline. The term gerontology was coined by Eli Metchnikov in the year 1903. It is purely a multidisciplinary concept. That is why any person from any UGC recognized course can join our postgraduate courses. Now, since it is multidisciplinary, it starts with the demography. It is the demographers who first set the ball rolling and who first generate red alarm towards the problem attracted the attention of policymakers. And these are all nine theoretical uh, papers our students need to learn. Please read it anti-clockwise. <clears throat> but you know that the uniqueness of gerontology is that it is not just a theoretical discipline. It also incorporates the art of application, that is geriatric care. Geriatric care must be incorporated in the curriculum of gerontology that we have drawn, and I represented the Eastern Zone when the government of India has drawn this curriculum of gerontology. These are therapeutic interventions, I have learned this, some, some of the therapeutic interventions in Japan during my postdoc uh, work. This is physiotherapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, yoga as therapy. Counseling is very much required and dietary counseling also. So far, we have achieved this. 694 students, geriatric animators, are working in the community and <laughs> 454 students of six-month certificate course, they have successfully completed the respective courses, six months and three months from our organization. They all got government, I mean the government recognition, government certificates. What, what exactly they do? The duties performed by the animators are many, but primarily they help the aged to perform their ADL and IADL activities of daily living and instrumental activities of daily living. They act as escort to all the seniors and provide companionship, counseling to those who are suffering from losses, various losses. Please browse through some photographs. These are our training classes, theoretical, practical, ashono, yoga, etc., etc. And they are also getting training, the hands-on training in measuring vitals, etc. They are not doctors, but they know that when they should call doctor. They are not counselor, but they can provide very effective companionship to our parental generation. Last year, we also got directive from the uh, ministry to organize this awareness program in all schools, college, universities, and the members of Panchayati Raj institution. That means the implementation of what you have said, the dignitaries have said during that inaugural session, that is Hog Bandhan. <laughs> in fact, this is the sensitization program of members of Panchayati Raj, because in the grassroots level, they do all the administrative thing, and they have power, they have money, they allotted fund, and uh, they can implement many, many welfare programs for the seniors 
in their locality. This is Bankura University, the dignitaries are there. These are the students in the schools. The basic object objective is to strengthen intergenerational bonding in the school. These are all one day outreach programs. <clears throat> Allow me to say, sir, that we run two postgraduate courses in our organization. It runs one year postgraduate diploma course in gerontology and age management, first time in West Bengal, recognized by Calcutta University. <clears throat> and the second is MSc degree. This is also unique. We do it in collaboration with the Starling University. It is a MSc, three years MSc course in dementia. It's purely an online course and every student get Commonwealth Fellowship. Take a look. This is our Calcutta University programs. And everybody is placed after getting this uh, uh, Calcutta University uh, PG, PGD course, and this is Starling University. Every year in September, the head of this uh, dementia course comes to my organization, stay here for seven days, and help the students to know how they will conduct this from India, how they will get the degree from Starling University. Now, we are purposefully engaged in action-oriented gerontological research for improving the quality of life. Actually, I started my career as a research scholar of Indian Statistical Institute. At that time, I have not completed my 25 years. And all the foreigners used to come to ISI, they said that such a young girl and working for elderly person, what exactly gerontology is? In the early 80s, even the academicians do not know what gerontology is. But now, everywhere the awareness is there. So this slide shows the major research programs, the five prime themes of recent origin, starting from sociology to technology. There is a team of researchers in our organization. In addition to all this, we are committed to help the elderly who have no one else to turn to. We should not forget that out of 104 million, one third live below poverty level, nobody to look after, and no social security. This is the most popular community development program. We run two daycare centers in ge two geographically diversified area. Actually, when I had been in Japan, I saw that uh, how much I was really surprised to see the advancement in the field of gerontology. In every locality, there are day services, community kitchen, libraries, hospitals, everything existing exclusively for the seniors. So in early 80s, I have brought the ideas from Japan and implemented it in our hometown. Out of all the programs, this daycare center program is very, very successful. The basic objective is to keep the aged integrated in their family and to look after their needs. So it also supports the neo-gerontological theory, aging in place. This is mobile Medicare unit. This is purely government sponsored. We organize eight medical camps throughout the year. And it, this kind of medical camps save the aged from the damaging impact of chronic disorders. At the end, how happy and contented they are. But I must say, it's my humble submission that so far we could reach only a fraction of our total elderly proportion. There are many remained uncovered. Task is huge, but the resources we have is very, very limited. I hope, I believe that in the coming years, we will see the expansion of our resources and subsequent utilization of the fund to, for the benefit of our senior citizens, of our Baba and Ma. Dhonnabad, Noshkar. It's okay? Shall we go?
Thank you for the wonderful presentation and information. May I request Mr. Orun Kumar Mukherjee to come up to the dais to present a small token of memento on behalf of Bengal Chamber. Thank you so much. We are now heading to our next session, which is a panel discussion. Shop speakers in the air. The next session, which we are now commencing, is named as My Life, My Plans, My Choice. Although aging, the word possesses a lot of, lot of meaning to it, there's a lot of thing which we need to plan too. We are fortunate that this session has got some wonderful speakers who will disseminate information about the various aspects of how we can keep our aging royal. May I request the moderator of our session, Mr. Raju S. V. Raman, Program Consultant, Victoria Memorial Hall, to be on the dais. May we request Mr. Pratap Sen, Managing Director, Tribeca Care, to be on the dais. Yes, I May I now request Mr. Surya Prakash Bagla, Chairman Salty Group, to be on the dais. May we request Dr. Rana Mukherjee, Director, Care Continuum Private Limited, to be on the dais. May we request Dr. Gaurav Tukral, EVP and Chief Operating Officer, Healthcare and Home, to be on the dais. Thank you, sir. I would also like to request Dr. Aparna Lahiri Chatterjee, Managing Trustee and President Digante, to be on the dais. Dr. Aparna Lahiri Chatterjee. I think she will be joining us shortly. I would now request uh, Mr. Raju S. V. Raman to commence the session. I'm handovering the mic to him. Seems on, yeah. Is it on? Is it audible? Yeah, I've got it here. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, by the sheer numbers of people who are present here today, one can easily conclude that the topic under discussion is a burning issue, and there are many who are concerned about the subject. Uh, we, in the next one hour or so. We'll be hearing about experiences of people who have been working in this field, and then perhaps uh, do a kind of interactive session towards the end as to what could be the step ahead, what could be the step forward. 
Uh, you see, the session itself says, my life, my plans, my choice. And about two, three decades ago, when we were not senior citizens, so to speak, some of us friends used to jocularly uh, tell each other for anything and everything, we used to say, it is my life. Yeah? And, and we meant it at that time, it is my life, because we often see and hear about incidents of how your life is taken over by other people and how your life is conducted by other people. And that's why, you know, even for youngsters, when I go to schools to teach, I give them a, a topic for a panel discussion saying, this life is very short, don't lead it leaving somebody else's life. Yeah? So this is one of the primary things that we have to keep in mind. And social and economic challenges are, of course, said there. Lots of facilities have been added nowadays, but are these in the right direction? Are these affordable for everyone? Are these accessible to everyone? So what is it that we can do that we can bring everybody under an umbrella of shelter and safety is something that we are going to explore in this session. I would like to first and foremost suggest, if the panelists agree, that each panelist makes an opening statement and then we make it a little interactive among the panelists and then perhaps take a few questions from the floor. Is that okay with all of you? Yeah? Yeah, all right. You seem to be a little reluctant about the modality. No, it'll be a presentation, all right, but you do your presentation. But after that, you know, there, would, there could and would be questions about the presentation, certainly. Right. So may I uh, start with Mr. Pratip Sen, Managing Director of Tribeca Care, uh, to kindly make his presentation, initial presentation, please. Yeah, you could do it there or do it from here, whatever you're comfortable with. Fine. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Hello. Should I just tell it? I don't think. Uh, I think it's fine. I think people can see it. Okay. So good morning, everyone. My name is Pratip Sen, and uh, I'd like to thank the BCCI. Can everyone hear me? I'd like to thank the BCCI and especially Dr. Ghosh who has done this whole thing and it's a wonderful set of people I see today. Uh, I will talk about the company Tribeca, but it's always very difficult to you know, follow on the footsteps of Indrani D who spoke so well and who I have known for about five years right now. So with that, let me just talk about what we've been trying to do. So about 10 years back, I. I'm a, I'm a product of the typical Bengali middle class family, right? Ma baba boro koreche, boleche je engineer ho, MBA kor, the typical stuff is what I've done. And over the last, before I came back to Calcutta, I used to be in um, London and New York for a good many years. 
And at that time, there was only one thing that bothered me. Every night, the same bother happened and it just wouldn't stop. And with that, and that one bother is, I think, that's something that all of us have had, all of you have had at some points or are having, which is the worry about what's happening to your parents, right? So my father died when I was in, when I was in my 20s. My mother was alone for a good many years. Her, and she was here in her own home in Calcutta with a lot of cats. And every few days I would call her up and find out, how are you? And the very fact that she could pick up the phone and talk to me made me feel good. But every night before I went to sleep, there was that one worry that I hope I don't get a call at night, that fear of a call. So I told all my friends, do not ever call me after 11 o'clock. Because that, you know, once or twice I have got a call and at that point your, your heart lurches and you wonder what's happened. And that's when I started thinking about why can't there be a better way to look after your parents. And all of us are, as Indra Nidhi said, we are part of the sandwich generation which has people, you know, we are looking after kids on one side, we have elderly parents on the other side. What can we do about it? And then when you look at the infrastructure that's there in a place like India, it was really nothing, right? Indrani D spoke about a lot of things that she's done and she's actually created care managers, geriatric care man, uh, animators and so on. But when you really look at it in total, all the different pieces are very, very fragmented, right? You have doctors on one side, ca caregivers on the other side, and a person who's living abroad or even in a Delhi or Bombay, and we have a lot of customers where parents live in Godia and the, and the kid lives in Rajarhat, it's very, very difficult to manage care for your, for your elders. So with that in mind, what we actually try to do, we started looking at different options that are there. And when you look at, again, the US, the UK, you find extremely good processes, systems that are there. And I, when I started looking at it, I said that, hey, listen, I work in a large company, I know how to run large companies, there seems to be an opportunity in India to actually do something good, why don't I come back and do it? And with that, a few of us actually decided to come back, and five years back we started this company called Tribeca Care. So what is it that we do? Or where are we right now? I don't know if you can see this, but and as I said, we are Bengalis, we believe in Bengal. A lot of people said, as a startup, why are you coming back to Calcutta? Why not Delhi or Bombay, somewhere else? But we believe in the city, we believe that there is a lot to be done out here. And over the last five years, we have seven offices, two training centers, two and a half thousand caregivers that we have trained and registered, about 1,500 job opportunities that we have created, about 10,000 seniors looked after in 20 lack hours of care. And that one, when you think about it, when I started five years back, I started in my mother's old flat in Bhavanipur. And the first thing I started doing was interviewing caregivers. And that was, you know, something that I, by working in London and all of that, I had never done. But right now we have so many people, we have about 500 people working with us at any given point in time. So to some extent, what we really, what Tribeca Care really believes in is taking care, bringing it together and actually offering it to people, right? So you take it away from what people are thinking and what should be done into saying what can be done and in five years we have done stuff. So our fundamental motto is that seniors come first. And when I again came back to Calcutta, come back to India, you realize that India is a youth-obsessed society. Everyone is just thinking about the youth, they don't really think about elders. And you can see that in, you know, there are no ramps in movie halls, there are, you know, elders are basically isolated in their flats, in their homes, and you just don't have a way to actually bring them out and make them, in, you know, uh, enjoy life. So, the three things that we again believe in, right? And I think Indrani, the I think there's a lot of uh, um, sound. Mr. Sen, I think uh, uh, if some of the volunteers could please ensure that uh, there is less talking in the stalls there, then everyone will be able to follow what the speaker is presenting. Thank you very much. If you could kindly see to it that there's less disturbance from the stalls at the back on, on the sides. Thank you. You can carry Thank on. Thank you. Yeah, so, so again, as Indranidhi said, there are five elements that she spoke about that 
you know, the government is very you know, keen about. And the way that we have looked at it is to say that there are three things that we will focus on. One is senior care, the second is senior safe, and the third is senior freedom. And I'll just talk about these very, very quickly. So when you look at senior care, what does senior care mean? It's not about, it's not about just, you know, having an ayah who's going down to a senior person's home. Usually what happens is that sen seniors start at somewhere around 60, but at that time there are no issues that a person has, right? They go to the market, they can get their own pension, they can do everything that they can, but all they need is one point is, if there's an emergency, what do we do? Right, so they need a little bit of support when, you know, when they're in their 60s, mid 60s to late 60s. But as a person gets older, 72, 78, there are life events that happen, either a spouse dies or someone gets a stroke, when suddenly you see that the quality of life starts deteriorating and that's when the level of care starts increasing. So the level of care is initially very, very low touch. You don't really need to do much. And on the other side, it becomes very high touch as a person ages, goes into really the 80s, 85 plus. And at that point, we started creating packages, creating solutions where we could have a solution for the 65 and have a solution for the 75 and for the 85. And a lot of it is to do with medical assistance, non-medical support, taking them to the, to, you know, for, their pen, for their pensions, managing emergencies, you know, physiotherapy, all of that, but different levels of support. And the whole thing, again, I come from a banking background, and then when I spoke to Indra Nidhi, she had her geriatric animators. What we did was we brought the whole thing together, and we now have every patient or every member getting managed by a care manager. And that person at the bottom that you saw, oh, you can't see that person at the, at the bottom, that person is at the fulcrum of all the care that we produce. This is the same thing in a, in a different representation. So you provide companionship, you provide emergency support, and you provide medical support to a person at different stages of life. And that is essentially what we do, and our packages, our solutions start at a very, very nominal rate. We understand that people are not rich, uh, and as you, as you age, money just flows. So our packages start at about 800 rupees a month. The next part is going to be actually the home care and the rehab. And again, when everything is fine, everything is fine, right? So you have the old person is actually going down to the bazaar by herself and doing everything, but at some point, there is a hospitalization. And no one likes to go to the hospital, right? The thing that scares people the most after public speaking, I guess, is death and going down to a hospital. Right? And the hospital is a cold place, it is very, very aseptic, people are running around in harsh lights, and an elderly person would hate to go down to a hospital, and that's when we, what we did was we brought all the things that can be done by a hospital, or most of the things that can be done by, in a hospital, and we brought it to the homes, right? So it, whether it's nursing care, whether it's physiotherapy, and if you look at the next page, you know, all your things on rent, whether it is a fowler bed, whether it's oxygen, how do you provide it in one shop? Otherwise, what you have are touts all over the city who will look at the patient, who will look at the kid who's there for the mother and decide to give different rates. So we brought all of this together and I think by far we are the largest provider of rental equipment in the, in the, uh, in the city right now. The next is Senior Safe. Senior Safe is about providing verified household stuff. And then I'll talk about the SOS phone and the CCTV cameras, but these are products and services that we provide. But how do you get verified household and nursing people home? So we have a process in which we verify them, we train them, and then we have hostels for a lot of them, through, after which we actually deploy them into homes. And the question that I'll ask to most people is, right, would you allow a stranger in your home with your elderly parent? Everyone will say no. But the typical way that things are done today is that you call an IR center and you say Karuke Patiadin and you just have someone who goes across. And what we are trying to do is to make that process a little better. It's a very, very difficult thing. We have had our issues, but we are trying to make that process a little better on this side. Next is SOS phone. You know, person falls, how do you get that person to a hospital? So we have care managers, 
you know, who can actually go out at night. So it's a very simple process, emergency at home. We have SOS phones that we actually deploy or there are certain gadgets a person can actually press. It calls at a landing center and through that process we actually send and we probably do about one or two a week of sending people into hospitals, those who have had some sort of issue, either a fall or it is something that they're not well, they need to go down to a hospital. A CCTV camera, oh, uh, did I show you the, sorry. So that's the phone. The CCTV camera is peace of mind for the kids. A lot of kids just want to know that my mother who's 80 is walking around at home. I don't need to talk to them, but I should be able to go onto my web, onto, a, on, on, onto, the, onto the web and know that she's walked from her bedroom into the kitchen and back or the maid is there that day. That's the peace of mind that they are looking for and that's something that we have done quite a bit again in the city. The la senior freedom, senior freedom is important. Senior freedom is about isolation. People are lonely, they are sitting in a room and oftentimes